I want to kind of start out slow. I don't have a lot in my notes about what I want to say to begin with. It's been an interesting week for Mary and I. We've been uh, with some friends down at the beach. Um, we saw a lot of interesting things this week on the beach. Um, had some time just to relax. But um, I was reminded that life is very fragile. Uh, one of our friends out on the west, in the western parts of the United States, lost an animal, a pet that has been uh, a comfort and support to her for many years, and it was just very difficult to hear that news. And on the same day, I got a message from my sister. She lives in Maine. And uh, I'm just going to read that text message to you. It's very difficult. It's, she sent a couple pictures of um, her daughter-in-law. She said, we need prayers this morning. Leo's youngest son, Cody. That's my sister's husband, Leo. So Leo's younger son, Cody, and his wife, Becca, just had their third baby yesterday. That would have been on the 10th. Becca got blood clots in her lung last night, and they had to put her on life support. They say that she is brain dead. They unhooked the life support this morning about 5 a.m. She is still breathing, and we are praying for a miracle. And we communicated with her, and Mary and I had special prayer. But we got word later that afternoon that Becca had passed away. And now Cody, um, I'm sure he's in his early 30s. He has a newborn baby and two young children to, look, to raise and to look after. So I just was reminded this week that life is very precious. And we have to... I guess with all these distractions that we have, all the difficult things that we go through, most of us get up and go to work every day. We go through our daily routines. It's very important that we remind ourselves that this life that we're living is not the best life. It's really not the best life. There's a lot of difficulty. And the cause of that difficulty, let's be clear, the cause of that difficulty is because as a race and as individuals, we've chosen to turn away from God, our Creator. We've chosen sin. And... <clears throat> I was reminded of a text early this morning to include in this message. If you don't open your Bibles with me to John chapter 10, I want to read this uh, particular verse. John chapter 10, Jesus is teaching a parable about the sheep and the thieves and the robbers. And in verse 10, John chapter 10, verse 10, he says, the thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And Jesus says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. 
Let's break this down just a little bit. I looked up these words in the Greek and English dictionary. And this words where it says, they might have it. It's clear that this means it's a possession. It's something that we can have, take hold of. It's not something that is not ours. It's given to us. And he says that we might have this life more abundantly. Well, to me, it means that there's something amiss with the life that we have now. Because if we need something different from this life that we have now, in other words, more abundantly, there's got to be some sort of change that takes place. And I thought that fits perfectly with the hope that should be in each one of us. So I decided that the message ought to be pretty simple today. You know, we don't have a lot of hope in anything in this world. In fact, really, there's none. Our hope is, a, is in what God has given us through Christ Jesus. And we're going to go through the Gospels and we're going to look at some things that happened. Each Gospel writer talks about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we're going to look at each one of those accounts and think about the hope that we have of having the life God wants to give us through Christ Jesus and have it more abundantly. I think Jesus was specifically telling us of a, of a sin-free life. I think that's the reference. A sin-free life and an eternal life. Living everlasting life. Sin-free. Where we won't have these things happen in a non-sin world. We're, there's no more death, no more pain, no more crying. That's what we're promised. Sometimes it's difficult for us to see through everything that happens here in this life. To see that end result of a more abundant and eternal life. But there's evidence in Scripture that we have that hope. There's real evidence. So the scripture reading that Ed read for us, I'm just going to read through that again and put that on the screen so we can all read it. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, we find in 1 Peter chapter 3, and his ears are open to their prayer. So that's a tremendous promise, isn't it? But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And that's a tremendous promise also, isn't it? God is the righteous judge. And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? So right here, we have a promise that we don't have anything to fear. But, and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy or blessed are you. And, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Lift him up, put God first, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Our hope is in Christ Jesus. God has put his son and given us his son in our hearts so that we know and have evidence of that hope. Turn with me to Matthew chapters 27 and 28. And we're going to look at each one of the gospel writer's accounts of what happened after 
the resurrection of Christ. But I want to point out one thing. As I was looking at these scriptures, I noticed something that uh, really hurt my heart. And I want to read this from Matthew chapter 27, starting in verse 1. I want to make the comment, it seems to me that when we read these first five verses, it describes a person with no hope, with no hope. Let's read them together. I'm reading from the King James Bible, Matthew chapter 27. It reads, When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, When he saw that he was condemned, that Jesus was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Judas had no hope. He went back to the chief priests and the elders and he took back the money. And it says he repented himself. I don't know if he repented in his heart or not, but he couldn't turn to Christ Jesus. He had forsaken his Lord. He had no hope. And there was nothing left for him. Friends, our hope is in Christ Jesus and the life that he brings to us. I want to turn towards the end of the chapter and I'm going to start in verse 57. Matthew chapter 27, verse 57. When the evening was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. And he went to Pilate and begged for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. Now the next day that followed, the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that the deceiver said, they're speaking of Jesus here, that the deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say to the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. And Pilate said unto them, You have a watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. What's really interesting to me is that those who put Christ to death remembered his words. They said in verse 63, that he was, when he was yet alive, he said, after three days, I will rise again. Why did none of his, none, none of his followers remember that? None of his followers. And I compiled a list of the scriptures where Jesus said that I'm, I'm going to be, let, let's just turn to the first one. First one, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 21. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21. And it says, 
From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. That's just one. Matthew 17, 23. It's on the same page for me. Matthew 17, 23. And they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceedingly sorry. These are Jesus' words. He's talking about himself. Matthew 20, verse 19. I can go on and on. It's amazing how many times in Scripture, and I'm going to list them off, the ones that I could find. Matthew 20 and verse 19. I'm going to start in 18. Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. This is Jesus speaking. And the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priest and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge, and to crucify him, and the third day he shall rise again. Mark 9.31, Mark 10.34, Mark 8.31, Luke 18.33, John 2.19, and there's some other ones that are subtle. Like in John chapter 12. Let's turn there just for a minute. John chapter 12. And I'm going to read verse. Well. And starting in verse 3. Mary took a pound of ointment of spikenard. Very costly anointed the feet of Jesus. This is John chapter 12 and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, Why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and had the bag, and bare what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone, against the day of my burying. Hath she kept this? For the poor always you have with you, but me ye have not always. John chapter 14, he says, let me, let's just turn over and read that. Verse 25. Uh, John chapter 4, I've got to get the right chapter. John chapter 14. Jesus is speaking, he says, but these things I have spoken to you being yet present with you. And he goes on to expound that he is going away. Jesus predicted his own death and resurrection. And it was spot on. Let's go back to Matthew chapter I want to continue in Matthew chapter 28. Think about these disciples. Not just the 12 or the 11. Think about all the people that had followed him for these three plus years of ministry. Maybe they had false hopes about Christ being set on an earthly throne to rule Israel in that time and day. But all their hopes were dashed when Jesus was put to death. Think about how they felt. They had followed Jesus and listened to his words for more than three years. You think there was a lack of hope? They didn't remember what he taught them. There's a lesson there for us. Our hope will remain in our hearts if we remember what we've learned from Christ Jesus, the Son of God. <clears throat> Matthew 28, Matthew chapter 28, starting in verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week came Mary, Magdalene, and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven 
and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and become as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know what ye, ye seek, Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly. Tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell the disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshiped. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid, go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. And when they were going, behold, some of the watch came unto the city, and showed unto the chief priest all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders, and had taken counsel, they gave large a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night, and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews unto this day. When the eleven disciples were away unto Galilee, went away unto Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name or authority of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Our hope is in Christ Jesus. Can you imagine the hope springing in their hearts when they saw Jesus? Especially these women. They were the first ones. But I want to turn to the next gospel and keep reading. The gospel of Mark. And we're going to go to chapters 15 and 16. There's a theme, isn't there? The theme is we need to remember where our hope comes from. We can't put our hope in anything going on here in this world. The politics, it's horrible. And I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, but it comes down to we're voting for the lesser of all the evils, no matter who you vote for. There's no hope in this world. Everyone needs to turn to Jesus. Mark chapter 15, and I'm going to start in verse 42. <clears throat> and now when the evening was come, because it was the preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. And Pilate marveled if he were already dead, and calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. And when he knew it of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. And he bought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen and laid him in the sepulcher, which was hewn out of a rock and rolled a stone upon the door of the sepulcher and Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, beheld where he was laid. Not much hope at this point. 
because they had forgotten the words of Jesus. They had forgotten what Jesus had told them. Mark chapter 16, verse 1, And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came to the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said amongst themselves, Who shall roll away the stone from the door from the sepulcher for us? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were afraid. And he said unto them, Be not afraid, ye see Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen, he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Friends, we have hope. Because Christ Jesus was raised from the dead by our Heavenly Father. We have the, uh, that hope of life more abundantly from Christ's hands. Because God has raised him from the dead. Verse 7. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goes before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he cast seven devils. And she went and told them that what had been with, that had been with him as they mourned and wept, and they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. I look at myself and think, how many times have I read a scripture and I've forgotten that scripture? And when the time comes for me to make a choice about what I'm going to believe, I need to recall those scriptures. And by the grace of God, he'll put them back in my mind. They needed to listen to Christ Jesus our hope. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country, and they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go you into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believed and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, shall they speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover." So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received unto, unto heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. How? The Lord working with them. He is our hope. And confirming the word with signs, and follow, signs following. Amen. Our hope. God has made our hope in his son, Jesus Christ. We're going to keep going. We're going to read all four of these accounts. Each one of these men, they saw things a little differently and they recorded things a little differently. What they were impressed by the spirit of Christ to write down so that we could have these words and our hope would be rekindled. Luke chapter 23 and 24. And I'm going to start in verse 50. Luke chapter 23, verse 50. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and just. The same had not consented to the counsel and deed of them, he was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, 
who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone where never a man was laid before. And that day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew on. And the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulcher and now how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. I love this King James Bible. It has right here in the margin, Exodus 20, verse 10. That's the fourth commandment. That's great. Now upon the first day of the week, Luke 24, verse 1. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed about thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they, they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? That's a great question, isn't it? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was yet in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified the third day and rise again? And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. But it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them which told these things unto the disciples. And their words seemed to be to them as idle tales and they believed them not. Then arose Peter. I just want to pause here for a second. Amongst the disciples, there's no hope now. Everything that they've put their faith and trust in, in Jesus of Nazareth, it's all gone. And here these women come and are saying that he is risen from the dead. Something in Peter's mind, something in John's mind says, wait, wait. Didn't we hear this before? There's hope. There's hope. Verse 12 of Luke 24. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulcher, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. And behold, two of them went that same day from the village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass, which while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Are we going to have hope? The hope that Jesus has placed in our hearts about what's going to happen in the future, about we're going to be given life more abundantly. Look at verse 25. Jesus said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the, the pro, all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And then, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Friends, will we read the Bible for ourselves? Will we claim the promises, the prophecies of hope that are contained therein so that we can claim the life that Christ wants to give us more abundantly? Verse 28, they drew nigh unto the village where they went and he made as though he, as would he, as though he would have gone further, but they constrained him saying, abide with us for it is toward evening and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. 
And then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while, we, while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened unto us the scripture? And they rose up that same hour and returned to Jerusalem, found the eleven gathered there, and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen, indeed, he hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known of them in breaking bread. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. They were terrified and affrighted and supposed they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled and why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hand and his feet. And while yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have you any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of honeycomb. And he took it and ate it before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all these things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that, re and that repentance and remission of sins could be preached in his name among the nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with the power from on high. But he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands, and he blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Sometimes we need to get to the point in our lives where it doesn't seem like there's any hope. Sometimes we need to hit rock bottom to look up and see Jesus reaching out for us like he reached out for Peter sinking in the water. There is hope in remembering what Christ has taught us. Here's the fourth gospel. John chapters 19 and 20. <clears throat> Remember, I'm reading from the King James. I'm going to start John chapter 19. I'm going to start in verse 38. Isn't it interesting that this Joseph of Arimathea is mentioned in all four Gospels? Here it is right here. John 19, 38. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden and in the garden, a new sepulcher wherein he was never laid any man. There they laid Jesus, therefore, because the Jews preparation day for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. Verse 20, chapter 20, starting in verse 1. And here is the hope that we have. Jesus is risen. The first of the day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher and seeing the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and saith unto them, 
They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter there, <laughs> isn't that interesting? So instead of thinking about Jesus' words and the hope in Jesus' words, she just assumed that Jesus was dead and someone had laid him elsewhere. We need to remember we have hope in Christ Jesus. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes laying, yet went he not in. Then comes Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and seeing the linen clothes lie and the napkin that was about his head, not laying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own home. But Mary stood without the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. And seeing two angels in white sitting one at the head, and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. They say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? And she saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. And Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told to the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came, Jesus, and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had said so said, he showed them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord, and said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whoever sins are retained, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I shall see in, in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and he stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach here thy finger and behold my hands. Reach here thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless, but believing. Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. This is the hope 
that we have. This is the evidence of that hope. That Christ has been risen, raised by the Father. There's a text in John, 1 John chapter 5, it says that God has given us life and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life and he who has not the Son does not have life. That life is life more abundantly. That's the hope that we have. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 19 through 22. If in this life only we have hope in Christ. <clears throat> Let's think about that for a minute. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. I believe this is a pretty miserable life. Sin has tainted everything that we know. Verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. If we cling to Jesus and follow him, that is our hope. Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ, says Paul. Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Friends, our hope is in Christ Jesus. And I want to leave you with this last text. It's the last slide today. It's from 1 John chapter 4. Our hope is that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Our hope is in Christ Jesus.